Thank you, private members will continue. I call the member for Rockdale. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I rise to bring to the attention of this house the fantastic, right. the fantastic work being done by a facility a fair way out of my electorate, but one which I hope to see replicated a bit closer to home in the near future. Like many other members of this place, I've received numerous complaints about the tactics and payment schemes of private children's football training programs and the rampant exploitation of families and publicly, uh, and publicly owned facilities which are underwriting many of these questionable schemes. Mr Speaker, as the House would be aware, my colleague, the member for Heffron, has been very vocal on this issue. And following the overwhelming feedback received from the huge junior soccer communities in the south of Sydney, it became apparent that the questionable behaviour of some of these training academies was even more widespread than we had previously thought. I have heard an uncountable number of stories of absolutely disgraceful behaviour by these clubs, drawing, drawing in families with promises that their child will be the next David Beckham and demanding thousands of dollars for the privilege of additional training, often with the implication that should their child not enrol in the academy, their chances of qualifying to play for the associated club will be compromised. To make matters worse, many of these academies are set up to exploit non-commercial arrangements held between soccer clubs and local councils, paying non-commercial rents to generate commercial profits while the community foots the bill. Mr Speaker, football is becoming increasingly popular, and it is important that we are able to train world-class soccer players. This is why I, I was encouraged to hear from the member for Lismore that there was a brilliant football academy currently operating on the far north coast which, which was providing exactly the sort of service families and players should have the right to expect when they engage in these programs. As a consequence, the member for Heffron and I recently travelled to Lismore to investigate the facility and I'm happy to report back to the House that the Liverpool Football Club International Academy in New South Wales, based at Southern Cross University in Lismore, is surely the best kept secret in football anywhere in Australia. Mr Speaker, despite the ravage of the recent floods, we were graciously welcomed to the Academy by General Manager of, of the Football Centre, Scott Collis, and what we saw there was truly impressive. As a, as a joint initiative between the internationally renowned Liverpool Football Club and the Southern Cross University. This academy is, tr is true to its commitment of providing a stepping stone for keen young players to move up to the next level. I would like to put on record my personal congratulations to Scott Collis, who I understand personally played a large role in creating this strategic partnership between Southern Cross University and one of the greatest football clubs in the world. Mr Speaker, we were fortunate to have, to have heard Coach James Gow guide us around the playing grounds and facilities during a training night and after we battled through his thick Liverpool accent it became very clear to us that there was a significant point of difference between what they were doing here and many and, and many of the what they were doing here and many of the academies running in Sydney they weren't just teaching young players um, by rote but instructing them in lateral and strategic thinking making their responses on the field and their positioning instinctual and adapting complex techniques into their standard play style. The Football Academy was also clearly taking advantage of the integration with the university with students specialising in sports science, administration and medicine assisting with the training. Mr Speaker, while there was simply too much happening for me to provide a full report to the House, as the need for reform in the operation of junior soccer grows, I, extension, uh, <laughs> I would encourage all those with an interest in this area to look to this incredible football academy so that we can see the replication of this model across New South Wales. I, for one, would welcome the establishment of such a partnership in Rockdale as I believe the best practice, family friendly atmosphere, is what we need across in order to propel Australian soccer to the next level. Mr Speaker, while they say that the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, may still be out there somewhere, I can report that the king of Lismore is still alive and well, and his name is Thomas George. I must give my sincere thanks to the member for Lismore and Deputy Speaker Thomas George, 
who made many of the arrangements for our trip and was unequalled as a host throughout our visit in his electorate. And you couldn't take two steps without somebody stopping Thomas to have a chat. Right. So, Speaker, slight uh, attention. After the overwhelming negative feedback I've received around children's football academies, it was a breath of fresh air to experience an academy which was generally working in the best interest of the children and families concerned. And I wish to once again thank Scott, James, Ron and Thomas for I giving me the opportunity to say that. Okay, private